You're listening to from the press box. Alpha RX Plus. Alpha RX Plus is one of the sponsors up from the press box to press row. For more information, you can visit them online at alphaRxplus.com. Alpha RX Plus has a 96% success rate in ending erectile dysfunction. And for box to row customers, if you log on to alphaRxplus.com now, they have a 10% discount to Box to Row customers, all you have to do is go to the checkout page and type in B-O-X, the number two, R-O-W, to receive the 10% discount. Again, visit Alpha RX Plus on their website at alphaRxplus.com. I'm Donald Ware celebrating 10 years of From the Press Box to Press Row on the Air. And the movie Straight Outta Compton certainly is still... Uh, still very hot, as a matter of fact. And, you know, my next guest, and, uh, you know, after I had a chance to go see Straight Outta Compton, so I had, you know, I'm, I'm riding down, you know, I'm kind of hyped up after the movie and so forth. And I had, of course, the album No One Can Do It Better by my next guest and was pumping that all the way uh, home. My next guest is the one and only DOC, and he joins us here. I'm from the press box to press row. Doc, welcome to the program. Hey, thank you a lot, brother. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Let me let me start here. Your thoughts on uh, on the movie, as uh, as I'm sure you've had a chance to see it. Uh, it's a great movie. I think those guys did a great job, and uh, they really deserve uh, all the uh, uh, all the, the great things that are happening uh, because of it. You know, it's a uh, I think it touches uh, a lot of different people from different age groups and different racial backgrounds because, uh, you know, it's a, it's a nostalgia piece. So, uh, um, I'm really happy, uh, for everybody involved that it's done so well. Yeah, I agree. I think one of the parts that I, that I think is important and you could tell that, you know, you had some people or, you know, certainly F. Gary Gray really knew what he was doing was, uh, the part when they when they focused on you, obviously your character uh, in the movie after the accident uh, and so forth. I, I thought a very significant part of the movie. Well, they sure they touched on it. You know, uh, it would be difficult to tell that story without without including that part because that accident was a pivotal uh, a point in in the the in the apocalypse. You know, uh, the road switched, uh, it switched directions that night. You know, everything changed that night. And so, uh, not only was that like a precursor to Dre and I, uh, figuring out we wanted to do our own thing, but, uh, that was the, the end basically of the no one can do it better DOC as an artist. Um, uh, I'm sad to say, you know, it, it was a uh, it was a horrible night for me, and probably the start of I don't know, maybe maybe five or ten of the worst years of my life, probably. Man, I, I, I am sorry to hear that because I mean, when you think about, I mean, and I said this, oh, DJ Yellow had a chance to talk with him on uh, last week. I mean, you know, I mean, I cannot really overstate how tight the album was and in you obviously uh, as well um what what they didn't talk about in the movie obviously you're talking about Compton and you're from Dallas how did you even hook up with NWA well that was a uh, at the beginning of the movie when they were in that in that club that Lonzo owned there was another DJ that was involved in that club uh who moved to Dallas um, shortly before, uh, shortly after, um, that club started happening and got a job at a local radio station. His name was 
Dr. Rock. And he was the biggest thing that happened to Dallas since, you know, sliced bread back in, in 86, 87. But, it, but he knew Dre. And so when he got successful, he, uh, he called Dre down to be a guest on his radio show. And that's how Dre and I hooked up. Well, that the voice of the one and only DOC joins us here on From the Press Box to Press Row. L- let me take you back. Um, first two, obviously, the album "No One Can Do It Better." My, you guys had you, you really had a different sound. You, you guys were really onto something. I think one of the songs, my one of my favorite songs on the album was um, "Beautiful But Deadly" with the whole guitar and all of that. I don't know if people really got that, but that was an awesome song, man. Can you just kind of speak? You know, obviously, DOC and the Doctor, the formula was off the chain. Can can you kind of take us back? to the time in the making of that album? Well, uh, during those days, man, everything was so hectic. We were moving around so much because uh, I think a couple weeks after I got to to California, uh, we went in the studio. I went in the studio for the first time, and we did. We won easy that day. Uh, Dre pulled up his beat. And he says, uh, can you write something to it? And I said, sure. It took me about, you know, five or ten minutes back in those days. I was fast. Right. And uh, and that song was done. And when he, and when we, we won easy, was done. Everything, like, it was like a gunshot. Everything started happening so fast after that. Um, we were in the studio every day for the next, I don't know, seven, eight, nine months. And we cranked out three albums in, in that time, you know. And in between doing shows every weekend, and so a lot of my record I wrote on planes, uh, on buses. Dre would say, hey, man, I had an idea. For instance, Dre said I had an idea. He came back from the movies with Michelle A. and said I had an idea. You were doing this song called The Formula to a Marvin Gaye beat, and he played me the Inner City Blues song. And I just sat and wrote the song right there on the spot. That's that's really how my my album happened. You know, it's a lot of weekend visits, and you know, we didn't spend a lot of time on my stuff. It was just super easy, and we did it super fast. Wow! And I, I know you mentioned obviously everything changed after that, but you did put out um, you've put out a couple of albums even since uh, the accident with the the writing part of everything you mentioned with no one can do it better. Everything was easy. Was it, was it still that way with your, the, the projects that you put out even after the accident and no one can do it better? Well, I'm a writer. So writing is always going to be easy. <clears throat> the thing that was difficult was facing the fact that I didn't have my superpowers anymore, you know, so to speak. Uh, before, uh, uh, pre-accident, uh, my voice was really, it was really pretty special. I could, I could do down there anything with that thing, you know. And uh, so, rapping post-accident, it was more of a, it, w- it was more difficult for my psyche uh, than anything else. You know, I, I could still write with the best of them even today, you know. Uh, but I don't have the <clears throat> the vocal strength to really pull it off. Although I will, I will give you a bit of a, an, an interesting thing for your show. Maybe people can talk about it since it's in Detroit. Sure. Uh, about a year and a half ago, my voice started coming back on its own. And if I concentrate I can speak with a natural speaking voice again. Wow. 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 Fuck you up, it? I don't have the power that I have, but I have the voice that came back. I I don't know what's going to happen. You know, like I said, uh, I was actually in, in prison when it came back. Look, I'm going to tell you something. That the NWA movie is a fantastic story. It was a great movie. 
But if I told you, I sat here for hours and we talked about my story, it would really freak you out. Um, but long story short, I had to spend some time uh, uh, locked away because of mistakes. And while I was locked up, the voice came back on its own. I, and I can't tell you why it came back or, or what the anything was about it, but it came back. And, and sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. You know, it, it just depends on uh, where I am and if I want to freak somebody out or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, no question about it. That's the one and only DOC. He joins us here on the program. Of course, you can follow him on Twitter at West Coast DOC. Are you... Uh, Doc, any in any pain? Is it does it does it pain you to to talk? No, no. It, it, it uh, <clears throat> I, I've actually come to terms with it, and maybe that's why the other voice came back. You know, uh, for for a long time, I led a real destructive lifestyle. You know, um, because it got taken away from me. You know, a lot of, a whole lot of drugs, a whole lot of alcohol, a whole lot of women, you know, a whole lot of, uh, of desperate shit to try to cover up that pain. Like you didn't get to see any of that in the movie. They didn't, matter of fact, the movie didn't really even, it didn't show you any of the dark sides of, uh, of that world that we lived in during those times. But, you know, God willing, if I get a chance to tell this side of the story, you'll be able to see. Like, there's a lot of really uh, crazy things that happen. Uh, a lot of really f***ed up things, if, if you'll excuse my language, um, that was going on during those days. But show business is a rough business, man. you got to have thick skin, and you, you got to be a strong person mentally to really be able to deal with this world. But I'm, I'm, I made it through, man. I made it through, and 30 years later, they made a fantastic movie about it, and I'm really happy for those guys. Yeah, I support them 1,000%. We're celebrating 10 years here on From the Press Box to Press Row. We're also celebrating the present, an exclusive interview with rapper The D.O.C. More of the interview after this small pause for the cause. We want to respect the time and your time, so a couple of more thoughts, and uh, we do appreciate it. Obviously, I mean, you're the you know the pen behind the chronic other albums. I mean, if it's not for you, then there is no chronic in the masterpiece that it ultimately became uh, or is. Uh, I read the piece that you did with DX in 2011, and uh, man, that was that. I mean, it, the piece was so real. It talked a lot about. Um, you know, your relationship with Dr. Dre, et cetera. What is you all's relationship at this point? You know what? <clears throat> because I respect Dre so much. I want to leave that that question open uh, because it's, it's great today. It sucks tomorrow and it'll be great Thursday and it'll suck Friday. It's, it's very, you know, we're, we're, we're really like, we're a lot like brothers and we fight, you know, and it, and it just, it just is what it is, you know, and he's a very prideful guy. I'm a very prideful guy and I don't believe in, 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 uh, uh, bowing down to anybody. I wouldn't give a damn who it was, you know, and I, I have my own thoughts and my own uh, feelings and ideas. And if I feel like I'm right, then I'm going to stand up for it. Uh, I, and I don't care who it is. You could be Obama. If I think you're wrong, Obama, I'm going to tell you about yourself. But, and I wonder that leads me into this part uh, of what I really wanted to say uh, while I have this moment. Okay. Um, the the movie is a beautiful and splendid thing, and it should be celebrated. What we did as young kids was, was amazing. One of the staples of that movement was the At the Police song, right? Right. What no one seems to be really dealing with is the fact that that was 30 years ago when we were telling 
And now today, these guys are doing that in record, like, at an alarming rate. It's really out of control, and it's really gone too far for America not to wake up and, 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 and say something or do something. She needs to get off her ass and deal with that, you know. Like, uh, systemic racism is a, is a horrible thing, and not everybody's a racist, and not all people are bad, but if you sit quietly and, and watch the take place as if it doesn't really affect you, then you, then you, then you're a part of the problem. Yep. You know, and it's really, it's really time for people to get off their asses and say something about it, um, because it's bad, you know. Not just it's in Baltimore, it's in Arlington, Texas, it's in Ferguson, it's it's, it's everywhere, you know. Uh, and and so I don't want to go off on a tangent, but I really just wanted to speak to that point because it means a lot to me that uh, that America get a hold of herself and, and and check herself because that shit is dead. It's dead ass wrong. Mm-hmm. Wow, very very well said, very powerful. Um, we we definitely need your your voice back and in, in, in with the, that that piece, I totally I'm not, I'm not belaboring the point, but I totally understood where you were coming from on that DX piece, and that was four years ago. With that, voices through hot vessels are that's I guess what your album that you're working on is it coming out? What's next for you? Well, I think I I think it's time to do like I've never done anything based on myself. It's it's never been my thing, but now I think I want to do a documentary because there's so much I want people to know and I I really want to be able to give it to them in an artistic way. And and this movie got me really crunk up about it. So I think the next thing that I'm going to do is a documentary. I think I want to do an album and attach it to that documentary. And I think I want to do at least one or two songs on that album myself with the new voice I got. You know, I'm going to try to make that voice work um, and see what it feels like. You know, take it for a test band, so to speak. And if I can make that thing hum, then, you know, the sky's the limit. The DOC will be back in the picture. I know that's right. Now, are you... You were at one time, at least what I was reading, contemplating a, a surgery in Italy. Is that still going to happen? No. I mean, uh, I went to Barcelona, Spain. That's, that's another reason why I want to do this doc. I did all of this shit. I went over there and sat in these people's chair and let them poke me. I filmed all of this shit, you know. Um, and it was, just, it was just too dangerous a thing. Like, uh, nobody could tell me what was going to be the end result. And... It was just scary, so I didn't do it. But thankfully, I didn't do it because two years later, the voice came back on its own. You know, but like, 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 God is something else, man. He showed me that it's all his thing, and it's not my thing; it's his thing. It's not my voice; it's his voice, and it's gonna come back if it comes back when he wants it to come back. Right. And so now. I can sit on this telephone and have a, 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 a open any conversation with you or anybody else, and the voice doesn't have to be something that is going to freak you out. But then again, it might be something that'll freak you out because it all depends on which one I feel like you. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. And lastly, Doc, and we appreciate the time. I know you. I know you got to be a big sports fan, right? You damn right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I was, I was, and I don't know the context of the conversation, but I, I noticed when I was pulled up your Twitter page here, you said something about LBJ. Enough said. Uh, what what was that? I don't know the context of the conversation, but uh, w- w- I, you know, I guess you're a LeBron James guy. LeBron James followed me, bro. Um, that's like the biggest thing since popcorn for me. Wow. You know. LeBron James followed me on Twitter. Are you kidding me? Well, wait, now? well, yeah, yeah. Deal, but deal, but DLC. Let me, but yeah, but but they should. Everybody should be following you, though. If you're if you're into hip hop, everybody should be following you, though. You know what? I, I uh, when I was a young guy, and uh, 
another really powerful piece that's is, is coming out. I don't want to speak too much about it because Dre gets mad when I talk about his <laughs> but uh, there's another powerful piece coming out that will explain that he's putting out that has a lot of me in it. Um, that that that'll explain to you the person I was as a young man. Like I was really an arrogant guy as a young guy because I was young. Like I was I was like Muhammad Ali uh, to those guys in California, and I was just being myself. But it could have come across to those guys as I was being really super arrogant, and and uh, my ego was super overblown. But in Texas, that's just how we talked. Right. You know what I mean? I came to the studio every day and told those dudes how great I was, how lucky they were I was there, because <laughs> now we can get it, you know? And they didn't like that shit very much. <laughs> but the more alcohol I had, the funnier it got for me to do it, and I did it better and better every day. Um, so they saw me as being a real arrogant dude. So nowadays, I really try to take... Uh, the inverse of that and try to be as humble as I can, man. I think humble is the new sexy. And so, yeah, I'm a, the POC is a blessing, but I'm really just a look. I'm really just a lucky dude. I'm actually very blessed to even just be alive today. I got an eight month old son and he makes me the happiest person on this planet. So even though I don't have all the money that these other guys got, you know, I got my son. And he makes me really happy. And this uh, this voice thing has come back. This movie has given my my life sort of a, a an infusion of uh, energy as far as career career goes. So maybe I can go out here and get this money for me and my son. But uh, from now on, I think humble is the way I, I want to play. It. Yeah, no, no, I understand that. I, de- I definitely understand that. But me as a as a fan, one that uh, is, you know, pushing 41. I remember all of that, the formula, the the the, the video and all of that, man. It was just uh, an awesome time. Uh, I, I did mention we, we got off on LBJ, but now, so, so are you, I mean, from Dallas, you're, I'm assuming, what, Cowboys fan, Mavericks? Baby, you better believe, well, I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan for sure. Okay. But uh, Mavericks, I'm an I'm a LBJ guy, you know, so. I go where you go. Okay. I was in Miami when he was in Miami. I'm in Cleveland now. That he's, you know, LBJ is like Jordan for me. Wherever Jordan went, he was a fan of that team. So wherever LeBron go, that's where I'm going. Okay. Understood. Now I'm a I'm a Skins fan now. So you know. You a what fan? Redskins, all the way. Oh man, get out of here! <laughs> Tell him I do love I I love RG three though. I love the guy. Love him. Um, he just he tried to do too much too soon, and it, it, it broke him down a little bit. But you know how the system works, man. They 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 they're gonna try to push that dude into the ground because he doesn't fit their mold, you know. But the guy's a stud. He's a star, and I'm hopeful that that he'll get off uh, to a good start. But he's in my division, so you know I still want him to lose. Yeah, I understand. Now, I think I think he's gonna give it to you on Monday night, December seventh, and then January third. He ain't gonna, he ain't gonna give us. <laughs> he don't give us. He ain't gonna give us. He don't give us. He is going to catch some problems with them stars. You gonna see them stars like you in cartoons when them stars go around your head when you get hit, but it's gonna be real helmets. <laughs> 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 oh man, that is great. That is the voice of the one and only DOC who joins us here on From the Press Box to Press Row. And you can follow him on Twitter at West Coast DOC. Again, Doc, indeed a pleasure to speak with you, man. And we'll be looking forward to uh to seeing you real soon and some of the big projects that you're working on. Pleasure is all mine, brother. And uh everybody in the city knows I love the city. Uh it's like a second home to me. I spent a lot of time in, in Flint. And Bree is like my brother. Yeah. We appreciate it. Pleasure is all mine, brother. Wow. 
an exclusive interview with the DOC, the first time you've heard him use his voice. Uh, Got to pay some bills, going to step aside, come back. We'll discuss more of the interview with the one and only DOC.